everybody. Welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Kayla Rundle, if you do not know me, and today is day one of putting my engine together. They just walked me through the process for the pistons and rods, so I've never done this before, So, and we'll see how it goes. They're going to walk me through it if I make any mistakes, and I'll show you guys the process along the way. I have the first two components of the engine block right here. We haven't gotten the block itself back from machine work and the powder coating yet, but that will happen probably later this week. But first off, I'm gonna pull all these pistons and rods out, which I'm excited, I've never even touched these in my life before. And I just learned that the eighth piston is different. It has a little notch, so I have to keep an eye out for that. Hopefully I don't miss it because that could be detrimental. Just like the smallest little mistake here could be detrimental. So it's a little scary for me, but. He's gonna help me if I mess anything up. Do you have faith in me from <laughs> yes, I do. not messing this up? We'll make it work. Okay, perfect. <laughs> this is fun, more unboxing. This packaging wraps fancier than most car parts. I don't know, oh, is this all the rings? the rings? We'll start dealing with the rings once, the, once we get the engine blocked later this week. Okay, where's that notch one? Yeah. Is that, are they mollies? Yeah, these are molly yeah. pistons. Mollies may not. They, they may they not have a notch on them. Narrow, uh, they use a narrower. Yeah. We got more stickers. More stickers. This, more power. This is gonna be your torque spec. You're gonna need to make sure you mark the cap and the rod. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why? Because you put it in and then you only see like half. So you know when you're going together, well, they only go one. Say. They only go together one way. Yeah. So I, you don't want to put your cap on backwards. Right. Not yet. It's two pieces. So that'll be. So that's why it's important that you mark your both sides. So they go back together. Right. Yeah. That uh, way you already actually marked from the factory. factory. Yeah. They have stuff on them right here. Thanks for being so patient with me. <laughs> okay. He's had lots of practice. No, actually, I think everybody should know how to work on their own car. I agree. And these guys, I'm going to blow them out with some compressed air just to get it all clean and where all these rings and everything goes. And if we want as well we can blow it out these holes in here because that's where the oil goes and so we don't want any debris from like shipping shipping and packaging and holding them all so i'm just going to blow them all out and get them all clean okay now number them is the half shell working out better yeah i would have had to no matter what because some of these were Who would have thought that my one through eight counting skills like need some work? <laughs> Haven't messed it up though. It's hard to do this and also talk out loud because I'm like nervous and I'm gonna like write a random number. Now those are all numbered. Now I gotta take one of these locks and put them on the side that we just put the number on. All right, so we're gonna have to put these little locks in which these have like a little bezel. Let me try to get a light. There's like a little notch right in there. And that's where we're gonna insert the little locking ring in there, which holds these guys. You call these pins, right? Huh? You call this a pin? Wrist pin. Wrist pin, that's right. And then once you get one of these like locking rings set in that little notch, we're gonna have to put these through just to like make sure it's in there, but to actually fit one of these guys inside is really difficult because it'll pop out at you, just like springs on a car. Um, they have lots of tension and they're like really, really strong metal. So this will be interesting. He, he told me to take a seat, so just in case, because he said I'm gonna get frustrated. So we'll see if I get frustrated. <laughs> Did you squeeze these with your finger? My gosh, you probably have strong fingers. Yeah, you just get it started in there. Is that started there and then you hold down right here with your thumb and then you got to slide this in. I'm trying to copy exactly what you're doing. 
God, it has so much tension. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, how did you? Roll it on over in there, pushing down with your thumb on the, out, the back side. So you basically grease up here, here, and there first. So the and numbers. Slide it through this way. So number, number to the bottom. Turn that around the other way. Here you go like that. Just take your wrist pin, shit out a little bit of oil on your fingers, and then you slide it in. And you gotta line this up with that down in there, and it just slides in like that. Wow. Oh boy, this again. <laughs> yeah. How about the top? I pushed all the grease through. Yeah, that's fine. Jeez, master. My God, I keep wanting to put the other end in there. <laughs> like, why does this pin have so much room in here? <laughs> well, I haven't put it in that far yet, but. All right, what's going on in here? Hello. Hello. Hi. You're the new engine tech. Yep. yep. Good. My new job. All right, so for this process, we needed to gap the rods, and basically we're just undoing these bolts right here to loosen this up. And once we get the block in, then we'll be able to take these apart and fit the bearings in here. We'll wait for that probably at the end of this week, so stay tuned for that. But I just did all eight, and now we have these completely assembled, and my hands are pretty oily. <laughs> but. It worked good, and this completely spins within it. It's good stuff. So round two, because we had some problems with the block, we ended up making it bigger, more power. So now it's a 417.3, which means we had to get different pistons and rods from the ones we just did last week. Of course, when you're building a motor, nothing ever goes right. You have to get everything precise. So now I'm opening up my second box of pistons and rods. We're gonna keep these bags to save the other one. And we came up with a game plan for the previous pistons and rods I did. We're actually gonna be building, I believe, a short block. And it's gonna be the same build as my block on my car. And so after we finish the build on my car, there will be a block for sale with the exact same components as my motor for you guys, if you guys are interested in that. So stay tuned for that because I'll be building two blocks instead of one, which is awesome because double the trouble. <laughs> New rods, stickers for more power, and we have to keep this because this tells us all the info we need to do when we're doing the rings and everything. To kind of build everything into an assembly line, because if you put one together and then you have to eight in all different steps, it gets much more confusing. These we had trouble with last time? Yep. They basically like just lock this in place in that notch in there. So we have to shove this really heavy spring into that notch and then it stops this from escaping. So if one of these rings fail, this whole thing will just go. Poof. It's difficult because you don't give the perfect amount of pressure, that side kicks out. No, no. All right, Kayla, what are we doing? After we got those little clips in on one side, now we 
lubing up where the wrist pin goes through the rod. And then we just make it go in here. We're lubing everything up. So do this. And then it's kind of a dirty job, to be honest. And we kind of just rub oil all over this wrist pin. And we want to make sure all the numbers are going to be lined up. So it's like that. And then you want to shove this through on the other side that the, the ring is not in because otherwise it won't go in. And this just goes through. And boom, just like that. And it'll push the oil through just because it's kind of tight. And this floats in there and all the numbers lined up. And I'm gonna lay these out for when we put the other pin in the other side. Seven to go. Pretty simple. I'm just gonna put this oil on my finger because it makes it easier. So this is like the only part of the process that we can do without the engine block. And it's quite simple, except for the fact that we can't get the rings in ourselves. So they said a lot of people try to build their own engine block and this is the first step. And then they try to put in those little pins themselves and realize that they should go give it to a professional. So it doesn't really take long for people to figure that out. <laughs> Even though I'm learning the whole process, I would probably sit in my garage for a full like two days figuring out those little pins. Number eight. Heck yeah, and there it is. And so now we have these extra rings. We just lay it out in a nice order so we don't get confused. And these rings hold this rod and the ring pin in the center, and it locks it in the center. So that these pins are is what is holding this whole system in the center. So we rely a lot on these little pins. And here we go again with the hardest part of the job. So we are gonna let the master do that because we are gnawing away at the pistons pretty bad. So I don't want to destroy it because when you start gnawing away at the metal pieces, sometimes if you don't blow it all out properly, that metal will be in your engine even if you don't even see it. it's like microscopic. If it's just perfectly done, I'd rather have that rather than little flakes be in my engine and my brand new oil and the break in oil and everything. We gnawed away at them enough. <laughs> And then after these uh, little rings are in, then that completes the putting together the pistons and rods. All right, so we are going to be breaking apart these rods for, we have to put the uh, seal, the like gaskets in here, I forget what they're called. But we have to undo this. So this actually comes apart right here. So the, these bolts right here, you undo them enough just to be able to break this loose. So we use this to hold it for us. So first I push it all the way through. Don't tighten it too much on the device, just so it kind of like barely sits in there because you don't want to damage it. Break it loose just enough to, and it's honestly not on there very tight at all. So you break it loose, and we'll undo it enough just so we can undo the rod. Look at how far she's come. She's got snap-on tools now. <laughs> Please. Tighten it just enough and then you can hold it by this or the rod and just kind of wiggle it back while pulling away. And boom, you'll know when it's done because it pops out. And then we're going to place these over here and we're going to go through all eight pistons and rods and cover it up and then we are going to wait until we get the block to start on the rings. So that's going to whip through these. Beautiful. How's the car coming, Kayla? Okay, now we're on to the rocker arms, which I'm doing the LS7 rocker arms, which are slightly different from the LS3. He has like a special magnetic tool here to push out the little center pieces where we are going to be be replacing it with the trunnion kit and I did get the CHE trunnion kit. Look how pretty these are. So pretty.
pretty. And the reason you do a Chunyun kit, once I pop out these little bearings, I'll show you guys, they have like little needles, which can be detrimental in your engine. If this piece comes out from the stock ones, you'll have all these little needles going all into your motor and messing it up because we don't want metal pieces floating around the motor whatsoever. Line up the rocker arm with this kit, push this in, and I'm gonna pull this all the way until it clicks twice all the way through. God, I haven't heard it click yet. Okay, one. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh yeah, look at this is a perfect example of all these guys. And these little guys are what we do not want. <laughs> Just fell all over the floor. I'm nervous of it falling down now. I'm like, don't fall. That's crazy. Two little pieces. Hey, what's this chemical called again? This is Varsol. Varsol. This is a. Uh, it's not as potent as Bright Clean, but it uh, it re it releases grime and oil and and it well in we use Varsol because. You can run a clean cycle with Varsol and recycle within the machine. That's cool. That way you can keep using it. Whereas Blake Brake Clean. It's one and done. Well, it evaporates. So yeah. what, over time, you just lose your chemicals. So the Varsol does not evaporate as much. All right, so we're doing the trunnion kit and after pulling apart the rocker arms and yes, yeah, so we throw away the stock trunnions, throw those away, don't want those because of the little needle bearings in there. And then we have these, which are all a solid piece, which are less likely to throw all the needles and everything together since this doesn't even have needles, it's like a giant piece. How I do these is put this in first and then these are, so we take the brass, the brass bushing and put these on the outside edges to secure the middle piece. And then we got these little rings. And I was told that each side is different. One side slightly more beveled than the other and it's ever so slightly, like you probably wouldn't even be able to tell on camera, but the beveled side goes inwards towards the rocker arm. Once I figure out what side goes on the rocker arm, I use this little tool and grab these holes, open it up, and put it on this outside edge to secure it in place. And then I do the same thing on the other side, and that's it. Then you get this completed set. Pretty easy. These are super easy to do. I feel like anybody could do these for their top end. Yes, I agree. So sorry guys, I kind of rushed through the CHE Trunnion kit, but we did choose this Trunnion kit because it's one of the easier Trunnion kits to get installed. And again, like I said in the video, a Trunnion kit does get rid of the needle bearings in your stock Trunnions. So this is kind of like an insurance for your motor. Uh, it's also very popular to do this when you have a cammed car. So I actually did the Smith Brothers Trunnion Kit, which DPI actually offers. When I did put in the SS3 cam, it basically just helps with the longevity of your engine. It lasts longer than the stock Trunnions, and it's just a good way to prevent anything from happening or those needle bearings getting into your engine oil and causing later damage down the road. In this video, I did the Trunnion Kit and I did the assembly of the pistons and rods because it basically is the start of assembling my motor. And we do these things before we assembly the motor, just cause it's easier to do these now versus later. 
since these are things you can do before you start putting the motor together. It's easier just to have it all done. For the pistons, I did go with the Molly Motorsport Alloy Forge Pistons, which these are the top of the line products. And the reason it is one of the best is because it has an anodized finish and the anodized finish helps reduce carbon buildup, but obviously you would be getting carbon buildup anyways, but it does help it and help the longevity of the product. And the ring package is actually known on the Molly Motorsports to be one of the best, which means the ring package has low drag and it's very easy to install, which is gonna be, I believe in the next video, I am gapping my ring. So stay tuned for that. Took me a long time, but well worth it. For the connecting rods, I went with the H-Beam Callie's Compstar connecting rods. Again, this is just known as one of the top of the line products as well. And we have to assemble these to eventually go on the crankshaft when we start assembling the motor together. So it's just easier to get the trunnion kit and the pistons and rods done now. I will have everything linked in the description of this video and also in all the future descriptions. So you guys can go check out these products. The bore I chose was 4.075 and the stroke was four inch. So that's what I chose with my 416. So then obviously the pistons and rods uh, match up with the sizing that I chose for my engine and my displacement and everything above. Um, I'll explain it more in future videos, but thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys all have an amazing day or night, whatever time it is. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.